On today's show, we're gonna look at how to create your own LUT or lookup table for use in video editing. Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live three times a week show here at youtube.com slash photo joseph every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific, sometimes a few minutes late, getting our things going here, talking about photography, video, and all kinds of fun related stuff. Hey, guess what, everybody? I have a new toy. Look at this. No wires on me. Check this out. I am completely wireless. I now have, thanks to, look at that, a wireless transmitter, wireless uh, receiver for the audio. This is thanks to one of our absolute favorite guests here, one of our regulars, Mr. Jake Guptill, thank you so much, my friend. Jake sent this over as a value for value. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I now can move around the studio. I can be anywhere and still hear myself and still hear Ryan, which is huge. Not just hear myself, but hear the whole show. So I know if something goes wrong, you know, whenever I'm over here usually doing a thing, I always have to take out the ears and unplug. And that's really bothersome because I don't know what's actually happening on the air. And this way, now I know if my mic, if I get too far away from the mic pack or anything, I know it's happening. So I am on top of the world. So thank you, Jake. That was above and beyond you rock, sir. So thank you, thank you, thank you. With all that said, Let's get on with the show. So as I said, today we're talking about how to build a LUT. And you might be saying, what the heck is a LUT? A LUT stands for a lookup table. And all a lookup, lookup table is, it's quite simple really, it's a table, imagine a big, huge Excel spreadsheet that says, if the RGB value equals this, then convert it to this. That's all. So it could be as simple as make black, black into a little bit grayer, make this red three points bluer. It could be make this black white. It could be a complete reversal. It could be anything. You can map any color, any RGB color, into any other. Imagine it in a three-dimensional space, three-dimensional box, and that's why they're called 3D LUTs. You have three axes, red, green, and blue, and in that space, you have all your colors living. Now, you may have seen, and you'll see this when we go through here, and I'm going to start with this because it's a little bit techy, but I want to get into this part to begin with. You'll see in there, you'll see when you're looking around at LUTs that you can buy LUTs that are, or find LUTs that are talking about 4x4, four four, well, 4x4x4, four 8x8x8, four four, eight eight eight, or 16 16 16 and that is, is how much data is in there and therefore the accuracy of the LUT. And I'm gonna start, so I know I'm starting super techy here, but it's really kind of a cool thing to help understand what's happening here. Um, I have, I found this webpage. This isn't necessarily about, I mean, it is about LUTs, but it's not exactly for what we're talking about here, but it, it illustrates the point. In 3D space, let me go to this first 3D LUT. Um, imagine, here we go, here's a five point LUT. So with five points, you have five points of data, five axes on each, uh, on each axis, on each red, green, and blue axis, so red, green, and blue. So five by five by five. Five. So what is that? 125, right? Five by 125. Yeah, right. Ooh, good on the math. That's it. For your full color space, that's the number of data points that you have. And anything in between that has to be interpolated. So if you've got a point here and a point here in 3D space and your color exists here, it interpolates the difference in between. The more points you put in there, the more accurate your feed is going to be. So or your um, your matrix is going to be. So if you have, let's go back to this, if you have a nine point cloud, you can see how much more accurate it gets, 10, here's up to 17, and this shows up to 21. This is just a cool illustration. It's not, it just shows the 3D space. And I found that when I was doing some research on this and thought, oh, this is a really neat thing to show. So we've linked to that down below if you wanna check that out a little bit more to get a closer look at it. But the more, uh, the more data points you have, the more accurate it's going to be. It's not to say that a lower data point 3D LUT can't work, it's just gonna be not quite as accurate. And frankly, it's probably just fine for most uses, but hey, you know, accuracy is always good, right? We like accuracy. So um, with that in mind, now let's look at how we, well, actually, before we look at how to make them, let's talk about how you would get these normally. So you can get a 3D LUT from any number of places. You can download, just Google LUT, and you'll find ones that you can download for free. You'll find packs that people are selling. They're becoming quite popular. And they're showing up even in still apps so that you can bring a LUT into a still app as if it was a preset, essentially, and modify the look of your still image. Ideally, it's really designed for video. And so the idea is that you have this preset, for the lack of a better term, this look, which is what it really is, this look that you can apply to an image so that you don't have to do all the work to get it there. And LUTs are usually not designed to be an end point. They're really meant to be a starting point. And so a lot of the LUTs, like I've mentioned before, Peter McKinnon sells LUTs that I really quite like. I've got a few of them that I use a lot. If you, when you apply the LUT at first, it's usually too strong. And that's just the way that it's been designed by its creator. It's a bit too strong. It's meant for you to dial it back. And from there, you really have to massage it because no two images are ever the same. Whatever the image was that the creator used when he was creating it, that's that image, but your shot's gonna be different. 
but you can take that same basic look over to it and then you massage it a little bit more. You go, oh, the contrast is too high or it's too low. I, I wish it was a little bit more saturated, less. Uh, blue, the blue tint is a little too strong or whatever. But you have a starting point. And that's one of the really fun things about it is you have a starting point. So now you can, again, buy these and put them into your Final Cut, Premiere, Resolve, whatever you're using and use them as starting points and that's great. But you can also create your own. So if you have an idea of a look that you want, oh, I really want to have this type of a look in this direction and this kind of thing happen in the shadows. But you don't know how to do that in post-processing. You don't know how to do that in your video editor. But you do know Photoshop or Lightroom pretty well. You can actually do it there and then export that LUT and bring it into your video editor. Now, Final Cut Pro, with Final Cut Pro 10, 10.4, I guess it was when it was introduced, you can bring in LUTs and apply them, and this is natively. Before that, there was a plugin you could buy. Now you can do it built in. You just bring in any LUT. And so that whether that's a LUT that you make, like we're going to do here, or one that you buy, you bring that in and you apply it. Uh, Premiere, I don't know when they've, how long they've had it, or but, but I know they have it. And Resolve, this has basically been that way for Resolve since the beginning, because it was, it was born as a color editing tool. So th for the three major editors out there, you've got the capability today, and that's what's important. Now with Resolve, you can actually create a LUT. However, don't know about Premiere, but in Final Cut, you can't actually export a LUT. You can't generate a LUT. So you can bring them in, but you can't send them out. So if you wanted to create a look that you wanted to save out as a LUT from Final Cut, you, you can't do that. Unless I'm completely missing something, in which case if I am, tell me in the comments or in the chat because I'd love to know that. Um, but at this point, we're assuming you either can't, don't know how, or don't care to. You want to do this in your still editing program. Again, uh, Lightroom or Photoshop, and I'm going to show you something in an Affinity Photo, although it doesn't actually work right now. It's a bug, but we'll come back to that. So that's, that's the idea. So where do we start? Well, first of all, to export a LUT in Lightroom, you actually need a plugin. It's only $10. You can actually get a free version that only does a 4x4x4 four by four by four cube, but as we discussed, that's not super accurate. So you can pay $10, it's cheap, to get uh, a plugin that'll do up to, what uh, I forget what the maximum is, but high. So that plugin, let's take a quick look at that first. And again, I've linked to this down below. Um, it's called the Export LUT Lightroom plugin. It's from a chap called John R. Ellis. And again, we've linked to this down below. And you can see he, he does a lot of really good techie explanation in here of what's going on, how to do this, and so on. Definitely worth a read, but uh, this is the tool that you need to export the LUT. Now, there are only certain tools inside of Lightroom, Photoshop, Affinity Photo, whatever you're gonna use, That'll, that can be translated to a LUT. And here's the easiest way to understand it. From all the, the reading that I've done on this, here's the best way to understand it. If you have a tool that does a simple color map, take this color, shift it to that color. So this could be something like the curves and levels tool, your saturation slider, those kind of things. Those work perfectly well. If you try to use an adjustment that affects not just that pixel, but the surrounding pixel, so things like sharpening, detail enhancement, those kind of things, because they're based off of not only that pixel, but the surrounding pixels, those can't translate to a LUT. Because a LUT, again, is a simple map. Take this to this. It can't say, take this, but if there's this next to this, then do this differently. That doesn't, you, that's not part of a LUT. You can't do that. So it's a bit more simplified. So you, you're a little bit limited in the tools that you can use. You, know, you can't add grain via LUT. You can't add um, noise. You can't denoise. Those kind of things you can't do in a LUT. But it's really about the color shifting. So with that in mind, you have to keep that in mind when you're building uh, a look in Photoshop, Lightroom, whatever, to make sure that you build a look that can be translated to a LUT that you can then use in your video editor. Okay, so with all that said, now we're gonna talk about how to actually do this. So you, you can take any image in to start with, but what would make sense is to take an image from your video scene or from a scene similar to what you plan to be shooting and use that as a baseline. All right, if I just take a photograph of my kid in full daylight and then I know that I'm shooting this film noir kind of a thing and I'm gonna try and take this look and make it, well, it doesn't make sense, right? Because the camera is not going to be looking at this bright, full sun scene. I'm gonna be using the camera in this low lit, you know, I don't know, bar scene or back alley or whatever. So you wanna have a scene to start with that matches what you're going to be shooting at least close to it. You gotta get close to it. And that's going to help you to make a look that actually makes sense. So the best thing to do is to go into your video editor, Final Cut Premiere, whatever, and export a still frame from a scene or similar scene out as a TIFF file and bring that into Lightroom. Now, one of the things that you'll see in, if you read this page from John R. Ellis, it tells you not to use RAW because, and this makes perfect sense, because a RAW image open in Lightroom or Photoshop, well, I guess those would be the same, or Affinity Photo or any other app, is gonna look different in those different apps because the app is translating that raw file into something different. So if I open it in one app and build a look, 
open the same file in another app and build a look and build the exact same look, it's not going to be the same recipe because the starting point was not the same. Therefore, you, what you want to do is bring in a TIFF file or a JPEG, preferably a TIFF so you have no compression, into, your, uh, into Lightroom so that you are, are doing your edits from a, a file that is constant no matter where you look at it. So with that in mind, now let's take a look at Final Cut Pro and look at how to export that TIFF file. So let's get this fired up. All right, here's a scene. This is a couple shots from my trip to Slovenia. We've got a couple shots in here. These are shot on the GH5 in log. These are shot on the drone in non-log. I mean, it's kind of their, their flat Cine D profile, but that's it. Uh, but we're gonna focus on, on these scenes here, specifically with this one. Now, one of the interesting points is this is shot log. So do you take the shot as it is totally flat log and bring that over to Lightroom? Or do you apply a base LUT to it first? Now, according to John R. Ellis' website, you want to apply the base LUT to it first, and that certainly does make it easier and I think a bit more, um, just call it easier. It's, it's, you'll see we're going to do this. It gets a little hard to get a good look out of it from the um, non-LUTed file, the base log file. But if we do a color, if we build a LUT based off of a totally original VLOG file, I can then take that LUT and put it not just back into Final Cut, but I can load it onto the camera. Because remember, you're, if you're shooting Lumix, you got GH5, GH5S, you can load a LUT onto the camera so that you can preview in your view and the way you want to see it on the back of the screen. If you're shooting with an Atomos recorder, you can load a LUT onto that Atomos recorder. I, I'm sure you can do this with other, other cameras, Sony, Canon, Nikon, whatever. I'm sure you can do that too. I, I don't know, but I'm sure you can. But the point is that you can build a LUT that will load onto your camera that you can then see your scene as you want to see it. However, that means that the LUT has to be built from the base VLOG look. You can't be taking a VLOG look, applying a standard Rec. 709 LUT to it, and then applying your creative LUT, because in the camera you can't double LUT. You can't put two LUTs on there, um, at least not on the Panasonic cameras. So uh, that's not something you can do, so you have to build it from the baseline. So it really depends on what you're doing with it. Are you going to, are you building this LUT to put on your camera? In which case you, you and while shooting log, in which case you need to start with that log file, or are you building this LUT just for editing, in which case it's going to be easier to get the look that you want, I think, if you start with a log file that has a Rec. 709 base LUT applied to it, and then you do your creative look on top of that. So let's see what all this looks like here. All right, here's my base file. This is totally flat. This is shot vlog. I'm going to start by exporting a frame of this so that we have that to, to take a look at. So I'm gonna to go to the file menu, choose share, and go to save current frame. And by the way, if you don't see this, I realize that that may not be there by default. Go to add destination, and let's just pretend it wasn't there. Um, we're in the add destination field. I click on add, you'll see all the different destinations you can add into here. Double click on save current frame, it adds that, and you can choose your default position. You'll be able to change that at, on export, but we're gonna choose TIFF as our, as our default there. Okay, so now I've got that, I go file, share, Save current frame, and let's put this on. You know, let me clean this out. I don't think I did. Nope. Let me delete everything that's in here. Lightroom is going to yell at me too. Yep, it is. Let's just get rid of this in Lightroom, so that we are starting from scratch. Okay, back to Final Cut. So I'm in Final Cut. I'm exporting out to my LUT building folder on the desktop, and oops, in Final Cut, there we go. Next, LUT testing. We're going to call this uh, Pidon because that's where we were. And this is going to be um, no, no base LUT. There we go. No base LUT applied. Save that. So that is creating a TIFF file. Let's take a look at that folder. There it is. Let's close all these other windows here. Don't need that. So there's my base one that I just applied with no LUT applied. Now let's go back in here. And I'm going to export the same frame. But I am going to apply the base camera LUT. So we're going to go to Panasonic VLOG LUT. So now we have a much nicer looking image. It's now a Rec. 709 image. You'll see that it's still quite flat. That is, of course, by design so that we can go in here and really start stretching it out. But this is what I'm going to use to start with. So now let's take that, file, share, save current frame. And we're going to call this one the same thing, Pidon with base LUT. Sounds good. Okay, so now I've created those. Those two are, we'll be in a moment, there we go, in my LUT building folder. Let's go over to Lightroom and I will sync that folder to bring those two back into place. Um, that's pretty. Let's, uh, huh, that's funny. Let's do a remove in there again. Well, we'll just sync them. If I sync these, it will all line up. Synchronize folder, uh, remove missing photos, synchronize, importing, 
And there we go. Okay. So again, there's our one without a LUT and there's our one with the base LUT. This is the one we're gonna start with, with the base LUT because it is a lot easier to get the look that we want using this file. So there's a number of ways we can do this, right? I can go, obviously I have to go into the develop menu. Let's hide this, make this nice and big. Um, I can go in, I can adjust curves. I can adjust things like the exposure, contrast, highlight, shadows. However, even some of these, while subtle, some of those are going to fall in, into that territory I was talking about where it's not just affecting that pixel, it's affecting some of the ones around it as well. But I, I think that for most uses, especially considering this is a starting point, you're fine using those tools. The curves is definitely one where you have a pure pixel for pixel match. So I get, you play with what you're used to, play with what you like. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and do this using a variety of tools. So here's my curves, let's switch this to RGB. We can see how flat this is, so I'm going to Pull up the contrast here, pull in my black point and my white point, increase the contrast on that. Very good, let's add a little bit of a curve to it. A little extra, cool, there we go. Let's take a little saturation on this thing. Excellent, bring up the saturation a little bit. And uh, let's add a little bit of a color look to it. I'm gonna go into red. Let's add an anchor point right here in the middle. Pull my shadows towards kind of aqua e bluish sort of thing. Okay, that, that's good. Like, let's just, I'm gonna call that a look, right? That's the look that I want. Okay, so let's export this thing. So I go up here to the file menu, and using the plugin that I purchased under plugin extras, you'll see down here, it's export LUT. So you have three options, export LUT, preview LUT, and assign color profile. I'm not, I don't wanna get into this whole thing because it's part of John Arellis's tutorial, so definitely read that if you're gonna purchase this. But in brief, you do have to make sure that you have a color profile match on the way, all the way through. Uh, fortunately, Final Cut does include the Rec 7 on color profile embedded in the file. This is a tool in here that'll allow you to check to make sure that's there. But if that is not there, or you got the wrong profile, you're gonna have problems, so you definitely have to have that in there. But I'll, I'll leave that to the tutorial for those who are gonna, uh, to John's tutorial for those who are gonna buy that. For now, I'm just gonna go export LUT. And it looks at it, and a couple things come up here. This is really cool. First of all, it shows the selected photo. So there's my photo, that's what I'm gonna use. Or I can use one of my presets. So I can go into here and I can choose any existing preset that I've saved and or purchased, whatever it might be, and choose that as a um, as a, uh, a LUT, to use that to create the LUT. However, remember I was telling you that not everything can be used as a LUT. Well, you'll see on here, there's this big warning in red, selected preset or photos have developed settings that can't be represented. I click on this show settings and it shows me the things that can't be represented, which is really kind of cool. So you get all the information on here of what is not going to work. Now, in my case, I'm gonna use the selected photo. There's no warning. I've got nothing added to this that can't work, so we're good to go. Um, I'm gonna choose my quality. I'm gonna leave it at high of 64, and it is going into that LUT building folder, and we're good to go. Okay, click on export. It thinks about that, it does that. Two operations in progress, export LUT, it is done. Let's go back to the finder, and there's the LUT. Okay, so now we head back into Final Cut Pro, and now it's time to add the creative LUT on top of this file. The way we do that is we go to the filters. If you haven't, uh, filters and effects, if you don't have this open, open that. Um, you go to video all and just search. That's frankly easiest. Type in LUT and there it is, custom LUT. We're gonna add this to that clip. That shows up under here under the video effects tab. Custom LUT, you see there's none applied. These are all the LUTs that I have installed, but I'm gonna go ahead and choose custom LUT down here at the bottom and go to the LUT that I just created. So there's one that I just created using the tool in Lightroom. Open that and boom. There it is. That's all there is to it. Now let me do this. Let me do a quick side-by-side -side because it's important to know that our look is actually the same. So let's do a quick little kind of rearranging the windows here. And there we go. There's our side-by-side -side between the two apps. And to my eyes, that looks the same. So now we've got the tools. We know the tools we need to create a LUT inside of Lightroom and export it out. Um, as you saw when I showed you in the in the export tool, you could choose from one of your presets. Not all the tools can get used for that. You can still use a preset as a starting point and play with the image a little bit more and then um, export your own LUT from there, just keeping in mind that not everything is gonna carry over, which is kind of fun, right? So if I was to, let's go back to that again. Let's go back into Lightroom. Let's just say, let's go full screen here. Let's see here. I'm going to do a reset on this image and I'm gonna choose a look that I know I like. Um, let's see, it's kind of, some of these Kodak gold ones are pretty slick. Um, let's do like, oh, that's actually kind of nice, kind of very flat and warmish. And I go, you know, it's, it's still a little bit too low contrast, so maybe I'll do that via, let's go back into here, but that is super flattened out. Let's pull that down a little bit. Maybe not quite, let's do this. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna flatten this curve out 
oops, wrong one, grab that base point, move that in. So now I've got something that I'm obviously modifying, but kind of started as a preset that I can then continue to tweak and work with. If I go to the export here, it is probably going to tell me that I have things applied on here that I'm not going to export. Let's go export LUT. Based off of this photo, sure enough, it says selected preset or photos have developed settings that cannot be represented because that's stuff that was built into the preset. So there's the grain, the clarity, um, and oh, interesting, even the basic highlight and shadows. That's interesting. So I guess the highlight and shadows can't come through with it. Huh, yeah, learn something every day. So there you go. So there's, there's your method of doing that. So let's now go back to the thought of using, why that's there, using the base file that doesn't have the LUT the base LUT applied. So this is a file that has not been converted to Rec. 709. This is what you would have to apply if you wanted to put this into your camera. So it's definitely going to be a bit harder to get that base look, but, you know, we can, we can try. So let's go in here, and I'm going to start with my contrast again. Again, grab the wrong part of the curve. Here we go. Do a really high, really big shift on the contrast in there, and I probably don't want to go all the way. We still want to leave some headroom in here, so let's make it a little bit flatter than that. Um, Put a little curve into there, take some saturation up. So now we're getting kind of back towards, towards our baseline in there. Um, kind of good. So we can keep on playing with this. Now here's one thing I also wanted to show you is let's say that I want to do an HSL shift. I want to go into, I want to use these tools here where I grab this uh, little scaly, I don't know what the thing is called, eyedropper, dealio, and I'm going to increase the saturation of the sky. Okay, so let's grab on that and drag that up a little bit. Okay, well, that's kind of okay. And let's go to luminous. Let's make it a bit darker. Watch what's going to happen here. I'm going to go dark. Check out the banding that's showing up in there. Why am I getting that banding in there? Well, the reason I'm getting the banding in there is because this is an 8-bit file. I'm looking at a sky with very subtle gradations, trying to do dramatic shifts on there, but it started as 8-bit. This was shot 8-bit. Had this been shot 10-bit, then we'd have a much smoother gradation. So for those who are wondering 8-bit versus 10-bit, and I will do a whole show on that at some point, um, this, here's a perfect example of that. This doesn't really work that well for this. Now, it doesn't mean you can't create the LUT like this and then load that up on your, on your camera and set that into 10-bit. That'll all still work fine, but for this 8-bit preview for this particular shot with a sky like this, it ain't cutting it. So um, just good things to know, but you can still use these tools to get that look that you want. So let's, uh, let's get rid of that because that's obviously horrible. Undo that. And uh, let's just say that's the one we want. So now I have a base LUT to use without having to apply. I'm sorry, I have a creative LUT now to use without having to apply base LUT. So I can once again go to File, Extras, export that out, and, and so on and so on. I don't need to do it. You've seen how to do it. So that's, that's that whole process there. So now we've got our files, our .cube files, which I can load into Final Cut Premiere Resolve or copy over to my camera and load onto there. Now, if you're not shooting vlog, which actually, hold on, you can't do a LUT. Now, I was going to say, if you're not shooting vlog, you can apply the LUT to a base, but you can't. The LUTs only apply to vlog in camera, so ignore what I just said. Um, however, if you aren't shooting vlog, if you're just shooting, let's say, Cine D, that's fine for this part of it, not on the camera. But as far as this part of it goes, you can take that Cine D look uh, looking file that you've brought, shot and brought into Final Cut or Premiere, whatever, export out a frame of that, bring it into Lightroom, do your look here, bring the LUT back, apply it back to the CineD file, totally fine. That's absolutely going to work. You can't load that LUT into the camera because the camera can only do a LUT preview when you're shooting vlog. Pretty sure about that. Pretty sure about that. Okay. Is that everything I wanted to show you in there? Um, yes. So Photoshop, you can do the same kind of a thing. It's, um, let's see here. Uh, where's it? Uh, Photoshop launched. Let's launch Photoshop. So Photoshop can do the same thing. Uh, there's no plugin required. It has it built in. There's obviously Photoshop, you don't have the same interface. So if you really know Lightroom, you know the look, you know how to use Lightroom, you know how to get the look that you want, it's probably easier to do that. But if you've got Photoshop and you want to try it in there, you certainly can. So let me open up a, that same file and then we'll take a look at it in Photoshop. So uh, here we go. We're going to open up the one with the base LUT in Photoshop. I'm going to apply, I'm going to wait for the spinning beach ball to go away. I'm going to just get away from that. Um, I'm going to apply basic adjustments. Let's see here. Um, what am I looking for? Which level? Well, this, uh, I was looking at this on my desktop computer and interface. Oh, there it is. Here's what I'm looking for. These base adjustments here, so I can do brightness, contrast, levels, curves, this sort of thing. So let's just do a quick curves in here. So I can apply this in Photoshop. So there's my look. Now from here, I go File, Export, 
color lookup table. So if you're searching the menu for LUT, you're not gonna find it. It's called lookup tables in here, but this is not gonna work. It's gonna tell me that I need a background layer. Because I've opened up an existing document, it didn't come in with a background. So you have to select that layer, uh, go to new background from layer. Now it's a background. So now the LUT builder is only gonna look at the stuff on top of that. And now it'll work. So I go export color lookup tables. And here we go, we'll go for our high quality again, 64. So this is pretty cool too. So you can build out different types of LUTs. So if you need a different type of LUT, but pretty much everything that I've come across at least these days uses cube, um, call it whatever you want and hit okay and off you go. Now, the next one that I wanna talk about very briefly is Affinity Photo. Because in Affinity Photo, we've got the same idea. We can, in Affinity Photo, use any tool that shows up under here, new adjustment layer. Any of these tools will export out as a LUT. However, and then, so let's just do one real quick. Let's go for like black and white, we'll go crazy. All right, so we did a black and white LUT. So that's, this is you know, worth pointing out. You can do black and white LUTs, which is pretty cool. Okay, so there's the look that I've just built, right? There's my LUT, I'm happy with that. From here, file, uh, export LUT, and that's all there is to it. However, unfortunately, there is a bug in the current version of Affinity Photo, which is, confirm this version number, 1.6.7. So in 167, there is a bug that causes this not to work. Some of the values are flipped. I've confirmed with, with Serif, the makers of Affinity Photo, there is a, a update coming for this. So if you are past 167, if you're at, I think they're gonna try and get the fix into 1.7. So if, you look at, if you're look, if you watching this and you look at your Affinity Photo and you're at 1.7, it should be addressed. Um, and you'll know that it isn't addressed if you create a LUT, you bring it in and it doesn't look the same, the colors aren't matching. That's why, because the bug is there. So uh, you can do it in Affinity Photo, though. So if you're an Affinity Photo user, you can use that, Lightroom, Photoshop, and so on. So that, my friends, is what we had today. That's what I wanted to show you. I hope that was fun and educational and interesting. We are going to jump into the Q&A segment of the show here. I want to shout out one more time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to Jake Guptill, who has very generously, for, based off of our value for value proposition, he has sent me this fabulous thing that I have needed for so long, a wireless transmitter for my ears so that I am no longer tethered to the table. I can move around freely and still hear the show. Thank you, my brother, I appreciate that. All right, folks, if you've got questions, get them into the uh, live comment here. We'll bring that up on the screen in a moment. And uh, of course, if you're not watching this live, you can ask your questions as a comment at any time. Uh, we'll be right back for the Q&A segment of the show. Mm -hmm. 